Hey guys, it's Sunday, it's a beautiful day, did a little riding this morning, cleaned my shop up, had a little party at my bro for my brother's birthday, where I had some, uh, oh, it was like a pepperoni, salami type of meat roll thing, low carb of course, with um, cheese, some Asiago and some Gouda, then I came home and had my steak and cheese, and that was good. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is people have been asking me for information and asking about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And, you know, I do do a ketogenic diet, borderline on carnivore type ketogenic diet because I don't eat a lot of vegetables. Um, but so basically I keep it simple. I don't do... I don't count net carbs. I count total carbs. I don't count. Um, I don't play the game with that. I don't use a lot of artificial sweeteners or want artificial sweeteners or even natural sweeteners that can cause a um, insulin response. Um, I clean up. I don't use. I don't use any vegetable oils or soybean oils or anything like that. I don't use soy products at all. Um, so what I did is I did, I did a little research when I started, I did a low carb diet at first, switched over to ketogenic and really cleaned up my food and cut out this diet soda and stuff because realizing with more information that that's can be a trigger for insulin. And when you have insulin in your body, you're not, when you have insulin released, you're not burning fat. So that's the key is like control your hormones and that's why you eat this way um oof chill there for a minute so you know i watch i watch a few people on youtube i'm always looking through videos and everything else so a list of people i watch is like scott the trucker scott the truck driver excuse me primal edge health um thomas the Lor the the Nor the Lorlo the Lorno something like that. Um, he has some good stuff sometimes. Now I just discovered a new one, Pearls of Wisdom and Food, something like Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Um, she's an older woman and she gives a lot of great information. And she practices intermittent fasting also. So when I started, and when anybody starts this diet plan or way of eating, really, it's a lifestyle. Do some research. Um, Dr. Eric Westman has a page for, he has a book on this for his patients for obesity and diabetes. and his food list is on page four. So you can even go to, um, I'll tell you in a second here. Go keto with Casey, Casey Durango. She's very good too, uh, very informative. And she's another woman who was, you know, later, you know, not a young woman and decided to lose weight. And she's done an amazing job. She looks great. Um, her CaseyDurango.com page has the page for from Dr. Westman if you go there. And it'll say the, the foods that she followed, press here. And you press the here and it pops up. And it's a very good list of foods you can eat and how much and foods you shouldn't eat at all. So, important thing is when you start to eat fat and meat, protein and fat. Could be could be some vegetables, but you want to keep your carbs under 20 grams a day. Um, and I say total 20 gram total 20 grams a day, not net 20 grams a day. So, you do that, and you get your body out of the and make sure to drink a lot of water and eat salt because that's a very important because you're going to lose body water um, water weight 
and you need water in your body, so you got to eat some salt, or else you can have real bad, um, you have real bad, uh, withdrawal symptoms, I'll call them, like hangover symptoms, where you don't feel good, you got a headache, that, and that lasts, sometimes, some people it'll last a week, some people won't get it at all, I didn't get it at all, um, so you just want to watch out for that, don't let it discourage you, work through it, um, Again, there's plenty of information on YouTube and, and the internet to deal with these things. You might just need an electrolyte drink that's safe on keto to bring your electrolytes up. It'll help you feel better. Um, and then you want to eat, you know, you don't want to just drop down what you're eating. Well, That'll all come. First, you want to transition from burning sugar to burning fat. So it usually takes a couple days, two, three days. Maybe, maybe four days, depending on how saturated your body is and how much energy you actually use in a day. And your goal is to become fat adapted. That's usually six to eight weeks for most people. Could be longer, could be shorter for individuals. So what that is, is your body will right, readily switch from burning glucose to burning fat. And... You will burn fat from the minute you wake up in the morning to the minute you wake up the next morning. There's no stop of burning fat. If your body's using energy, it'll be burning fat as long as you're not eating carbs or over 20 grams of carbs. So that's how that's where you go. So you want to just get into this, change, get your body converted, then. Well, we'll talk. Then you'll think about macros. There is a there is a limit of protein you should eat a day because your body can't convert excess protein into sugars. Okay, back to where I was. Um, yeah, you can turn protein into sugars, which isn't good. Um, so you want to keep that. There's formulas for how to do that and um, Primal Edge Health. Is has some good information on that. I think it's 0.8 grams per pound of lean body weight. So you would think whatever your ideal body weight is, lean body weight, you would multiply that times 0.8, and that would give you the amount of grams of protein you should have daily. If you work out, it's probably a little more. If you don't, it's probably around the 0.8. So that's kind of where I am right now. I kind of keep track of that. And then I keep track of my carbs. And you should really, you know, if you're on a weight loss diet, you're going to cut your fats down. And you're going to use your energy out of your body instead of off your plate. Okay, so you're, you want to, you want to eat less fat so you burn the fat off your body. And that will help you lose weight. As you get into it a little more and your body becomes adjusted, at this point you're probably not eating three meals a day because your your main goal is to eat when you're hungry, to fuel your body. That's it. Drink, you know, good, good uh, liquids and only eat when you're hungry. So... You may be hungry when you get up in the morning, so you eat, but you want to break up that protein in, you know, however you want to break it up, quarter, three quarters, half, half, whatever, and you want to keep your carbs low, so however you, however you come about that, and you want to have some fats in there, because if you're eating meat, you usually get some fat from the meat, if you're eating cheese, you'll get some fat from the cheese, you also get some protein. So make sure to count that in your protein profile and you move through. Now, what I do is intermittent fasting with the keto. And that's beneficial because your body in times of fast goes into cell repair and flushing out free radicals and some a bunch of other um, fights inflammation in your in your body, in your organs and stuff. And it's a longer period of time for your body to burn internal fat as opposed to external fat. 
dietary fat coming in. Um, I feel great. I eat once a day. You don't have to only eat once a day. You can fast for 12 hours. You can fast for 16 hours. You can fast for 20 hours. I choose to fast between 22 and 25, 26 hours a day, depending on when I eat and when I eat the next day. But the average is about 24 hours. Um, once in a while, I'll have some stuff during the day, like a few pieces of cheese or maybe some chicken or something like that. Um, once, maybe five times a month, I'll have like a lunch or something. Um, but I still try to keep it within like a four or five hour window for eating. So if I have lunch, it'll be at like two o'clock and I'll have dinner at like six o'clock, you know, something like that. But it's not typical. Um, like today I went to a birthday party. So I got there around four. I had some cheese and some, uh, sliced meat and I got home. I ate dinner. I mean, I was probably done with dinner by 6, 6.30, probably, probably before 6 o'clock. Um, yeah, 6, 6.30-ish. And now I won't eat until tomorrow for dinner. But I drink plenty of fluids. I drink a lot of water. Um, the only things I drink is water and the and this polar polar flavored seltzer because the ingredients are very limited you see on there the ingredients carbonated water natural flavors that's it there's no other things there's not really any uh there's no carbs no fat no anything in it really it's water so so that's what i drink in water and you know, if you have like a fizzy drink kind of obsession or addiction, this helps to cover that. I mean, I used to drink at least a couple two liter bottles of diet soda a day, which, you know, I cut down when I went low carb. And then I realized that you can still get insulin responses and everything else from that. So I eliminated that from my diet. And um, now... I mean, I'm I'm over 100 pounds lighter now. I'm 101 pounds today. I lost. Um, I think I'm gonna try to do another 20 or so, maybe, and see where I'm at. Um, the, we the weather finally starting to change a little, so I took the bike out a couple times last week. My bicycle. It did like three or four miles each day. Nothing crazy, just trying to get back and get you get it, you know, started again. Um, I do some hill climbs, some nice hill climbs with it. And today I worked on my rowing machine a little bit. Did 30 minutes on the rowing machine. I had a Concept 2 Type D rowing machine. And I turned on Netflix and I rowed for half an hour. So... I used up some energy there. I'll, you know, I'm working my muscles. So I'll eventually work up longer and longer, you know, faster, quicker sprints and things like that. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to get to my goal of losing, you know, I want to get down to maybe like 180. I'll see where I'm at, see what I look like, see how I feel. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever be lighter, than, smaller than 180, and that might only last for a little while. If I start, if I start working out and you know building a little muscle, I may go up a little bit. But body composition is more important. Um, I want to get rid of the body fat, the loose parts, the the squishy parts, and just be more, you know, fit in life. And at that point, when I get where I want to be, and I'm kind of where I, then I can adjust my macros again and I may, you know, I'll be eating more fat than burning body fat. And that, that's what keeps you, you know, energy filled. And, you know, maybe at that point I might need to eat two meals a day. 
or something in that one, you know, something like that. Maybe a 12 hour spread between meals. And I do something like in that. But till I get there and, you know, figure out what makes me stop losing weight and what keeps me energized during the day and how I, how I go through that, you know, I may have to start eating some other things to get the fat that I need. I may have to use more butter in my diet. I may have to, you know, eat more eggs with butter and, um, you know, just maybe some avocado stuff. You know, I, mean, I just have to figure that out. Once I get to that point, I'll figure out what I need to do to lift my fat levels. Maybe some fattier cuts of meat, things like that. But I already eat ribeyes and 80-20 ground beef so um i'll when i get there i'll figure it out but so that's that's my basics i keep it simple i eat burgers and i eat ribeyes and i eat cheese um i'll eat bacon i'll eat eggs sometimes but my typical everyday diet is burgers and steak and if I work really hard one day or something, maybe I'll put a couple eggs with my burger or a couple eggs with my steak. Um, maybe I'll make a little bacon and I'll have bacon. Um, but that's, you know, that's the that's the long and the short and the simple of it. Um, like I said, if you, if you really get into these resources and when you go on YouTube and you put in one of these things and you're watching one of these videos on ketogenic diets or carnivore diets, There'll be, you know, underneath there's a list of other ones. Go to them. Check them out. Um, you know, there's other ones where you're going to learn about oils and how bad vegetable oils really are for you and what the proper oils to use when you're cooking. Um, lard, good lard is one of the best things to fry with. Butter is good to fry with. Olive oil is good to put on your salads and things like that or for baking. Um, not extra virgin olive oil for cooking. You would just use regular olive oil. Um, coconut oil you can use if, if you like coconut oil. Um, if you like, if you're going to drink coffee, you want to stay away from milk and you want to stay away from sugar. You can use stevia or you can use one of these other erythritol or one of these other sweeteners that people use. Um, there's certain chemical um, sweeteners you don't want to use because they will cause insulin responses. Once you have insulin responses and spikes and it's still f flowing in your body, you're, you're not burning fat. So for a primarily fat loss diet, you're going to want to limit your uh, insulin intake anyway. Plus you want to limit your fat intake for health from a health standpoint if you're already thin or you know and you're just doing it for health for blood blood levels and your hormones and this and that then you really want to keep it clean too because these are all things that help with body inflammation um your cholesterol your triglycerides um just cell health all these things in general. And there are people that use the carnivore diet to help with like IBS or IBD, whatever you, you know, irritable bowel, bowel disease. And um, all kinds of other things. They, I mean, skin gets better. Their hair gets better. Their nails get better. You know, they, they're not blo from the IBD. They're not bloated. They're not um, feeling the pain that they feel. Other people with um, arthritis issues have said they felt relief from it for from going on a, a carnivore type diet. So these are all the things, and you know, I just want I try to help people if they want if they need help and they want it and they want some advice and they want some information. I'm glad to help, and all they got to do is ask. Um, you can leave in the comments. You can message me uh, if you know me, and I'll give you all the information I have, and I'll point you in the right direction to the people that you, you can watch and get more information. 
and places you can find to find the scientific information that goes along with it, I guess. And, you know, I'm giving you my view on it and how I do it. I'm not a doctor. Don't claim to be. Um, do I? My only claim is, from what I've seen, is that the medical industry is lying to people about how to treat things. Why be on medicine if you don't have to be? If you're borderline diabetic or a type 2 diabetic, you can absolutely improve your situation with your diet. You may be able to come off medications altogether for high blood pressure, for cholesterol, for um, um, diabetes. You know, you come off the, you can probably, you know, you, and you'll feel better. Um, and I feel great. Like I'll probably, I might go do some more on the rowing machine tonight. You know, another 20, 15 or 20 minutes just to do it. Um, it's just activity. And it's not a lot of stress on the body. Um, so that's, that's my view. That's how I do it. That's how I did it. That's how I'm where I am today. I mean, I was 303 pounds. I'm down to 202 this morning when I weighed myself. And it makes me feel good to see that. It makes me feel good that clothes I never wore before, I can wear now. Um, clothes that were tight or loose. I don't have to struggle and, you know. Listen, I never, I never wore pants tucked in a belt, ever. I mean, I've been chubby since middle school probably and you know through the years I've put on more weight and I've taken off a little weight and I've put on more weight and I've taken off a little weight until I was where I am where I was and I couldn't do it anymore I had one pair of shorts that I could wear I was like I'm not going to buy a bigger pair of pants I'm just not going to do it so I decided that day I was making the change and I cut out all the carbs and I started that way and I evolved it through doing research and looking at other things and really cleaned up how I did my diet and what I ate and how I went about it. And, you know, just cleaned up a lot of the stuff that I was using to cook with and things that I would eat at the market. Uh, like if I would get chicken and onions. You know, onions aren't great, but I love onions. <laughs> Can't help it. But, you know, at this point in my diet, they're not really anything that I need. Um, I And there was some breading on the chicken, and it was sitting in oil, which was probably vegetable oil. Um, so you add these things up. I eat chewed a lot of sugarless gum. For you, for the you know people who want, look Tic Tacs, sugarless gums, you know these things have sweeteners in them that can cause insulin responses. So you may think you're okay and you're chewing 30 pieces of gum a day, so you're not eating. I gave it up. I mean, I used to chew pack two packs of gum a day, just chewing on it, and. I used to polar polar uh, polar ice gum, and I, I gave it up. I don't do it anymore. I don't chew gum anymore. So, you know, and I used to use that as a crutch. Chew gum, then I won't be eating. And now, I'm not hungry. That's why I don't eat. <laughs> you know, if you're not hungry, you don't eat. It's that simple. Anyway. You know, carbs make you hungry. If you eat a lot of carbs, you're going to go up and you're going to go down. You're going to go up and you're going to go down. And that downslide is, I'm hungry. And that's like every two or three hours, your body's saying, I'm hungry. We need more of this sugar stuff. Bring it in. And, you know, you eat and you eat and you eat. Some people won't put on weight. Some people will. I'm one of those ones. If I eat the macaroni and the cookies and the ice cream and the peanut butter and the bread and, you know, I'm going to put on weight. It's just the way it is. But, 
you know, you also got to think about your insides. You can be 160 pounds on the outside. Doesn't mean your insides are good. Doesn't mean your blood levels are good. Doesn't mean your triglycerides are good. That's all stuff that, you know, the diet can affect without you showing outward effects. Maybe you're sick all the time. Maybe you feel run down a lot. Look, there was a doctor, ran marathons, carb loaded, did all this stuff. His blood work was awful. So he changed his diet and went to a ketogenic diet and improved his blood work and improved improved on his his uh running because you're not burning the carbohydrates that you're up and you're down and you're up and you're you know you're steadily burning fat whether you ate it and you had to store it on your body or you ate it or you eat it while you're running whatever you're and you get a much more even energy you're not up and down and up and down and up and down you just go through the day nice and easy so that's that's where i'm at that's how i look at it again that's my opinion and that's how that's my take on how you can get started um again do your research ketogenic diet gives you some strict things to follow but it's very pers- uh, it's very personalizable you can customize it to fit what you like that fits into the diet you might want some more vegetables than i do you know and you can go that way so think about it think about your health think about your longevity a high fat diet low carb high fat diet is good for brain health as you get older it they're doing a lot of research and it's proving that a high fat diet can you know affect your chances lessen your chances of getting like some alzheimer's or dementia things like that by keeping your brain healthy and fed and in proper working order so there's all things to think about take a look at this research don't you don't have to believe me you know listen to other people listen to the research find the research and read it and and see that the medical industry and the pharmaceutical industry and the food industry in general have a vested interest in you not knowing the truth of what's good and what's bad for you. If everybody decided low carb, high fat, food companies will transition and make that product. But there's a lot of places that are going to suffer. So when you think about it, if you're if you're soy farmers and soy is not good for you. Soy is a crop. It's a crappy product. It's a crappy crop that they make a lot of money on. It's a waste. It's a garbage crop. And soy and soybean oil and soy products and soy milk are not good for you. Not good for you at all. Um, Grains cause problems. That's why people have allergies. That's why people have issues with processing grain and gluten and this and that not really something we should be eating simple um but that's my take take it for what it's worth i hope you enjoyed this video i hope maybe you got something out of it and again if you got questions ask i'm glad to answer glad to help people out and um have a good day and i'll see you this week sometime thanks